Now, given that Republicans are going to take control of the House in, what, a month or so, it's obscene to think that Congress is planning to make major legislative changes before Pelosi has to give up the gavel. But as we warned you last week, Democrats are going to try to take advantage of the few weeks remaining to ram through as much sweeping change as possible. Now, in one of the most cynical, swampy uh, manners possible, official Washington wants to sneak legislation through under the cover of the holiday rush and trumped-up government shutdown fears. For weeks, the Pentagon has been sending not-so-subtle messages to Congress that failure to act on the National Defense Authorization Act and the omnibus spending bills puts, at, at, puts us at a strategic disadvantage. If the current budget extension extends beyond December, we may be forced to reduce accessions, impairing our ability to meet our missions and our ability to recruit personnel. Well, that's scary. Well, I wonder, were there any policy decisions taken by the Pentagon and the Biden administration that could have led to a recruiting crisis in our military? Secretary Austin has been very clear uh, that he opposes uh, the repeal of the vaccine vaccine mandate, and the uh, president actually concurs uh, with uh, with the Secretary of Defense. Um, he he continues to believe that all Americans, including those in the armed forces, should be vaccinated and boosted for COVID nineteen. And boosted, and another uh, excuse we've heard is that we need more spending to keep up with inflation. Well, I don't know much, how much time they need to spend on the irony, we are, irony behind that argument, but it seems like the pressure from the White House and the Pentagon is resonating with some Senate Republicans. I just finished a meeting with the Republican leader about finding a constructive path forward to keep the government funded next fiscal year. We're going to continue negotiations until we get the job done on funding the government. Both sides recognize the importance, so now both sides must chart a path forward together. Oh, chart a path forward. Now, that line may work in a Nicholas Sparks movie, but it's no way to run a government. The only ones who are optimistic here are the lobbyists and the consultants for big business. Voters may not have given Republicans a majority in the Senate, but they certainly didn't vote for stealth giveaways either. Now, this defense bill will, as usual, be so long and the text released so late that few members will actually read it, and even fewer tally up all the waste. But Breitbart uncovered something disturbing tucked inside it, something called the Journalism Competition and Preservation Act in the National Defense Authorization Act. Now, it will allow media companies, most owned by wealthy conglomerates, to form negotiating cartels to secure special favors from big tech companies, including some financial handouts. And it goes from bad to worse, by the way. The marijuana lobby, thank you, John Boehner, also gets a huge financial boost in the bill. No more government prohibitions on banking and doing business with banks with cannabis-related businesses. I'm also a co-sponsor of the Safe Banking Act, which would allow financial institutions to offer banking services to legally operated cannabis business without fear of punishment by federal regulators. Okay. Now, don't for a second think that they hadn't planned this all along. Now, staff on the Hill and at the White House undoubtedly have been working away on all of this nonsense for probably most of the last year. Take what happened last week when French President Emmanuel Macron visited the White House, who, who does right mind actually thinks that the Biden team didn't know what he was going to say in protest about the Made in America provisions in that so-called Inflation Reduction Act. Now, there were certain subsidies that were supposed to be eligible, eligible for American companies, uh, or if you had signed a free trade deal with the United States, you'd get subsidies in those two cases. Now, the EU does not qualify. Obviously, it's not an American company, and they don't have a free de trade deal with the United States. But the EU still wants the benefits. So when Macron comes over to complain that European exports would be hurt, Biden did not stand up for American workers or American manufacturing. He immediately gave in and agreed that there would be glitches in the bill that would be fixed. By the way, this is the bill that he and the Democrats had just campaigned on. Make more cars and semiconductors in America, more infrastructure and innovation in America. I believe we can own the future of the automobile market. Detroit is back. America's back. Instead of relying on foreign supply chains, let's make it in America. Uh -oh. He didn't mean that at the time. So now instead of making America great again, we're making France great again. Meanwhile, back on the Hill, the usual suspects in the GOP are trying to pass legislation that you don't want and, again, they didn't campaign on. 
Fake Republican Senator Tom Tillis, who has always railed against limits on foreign workers, is working with Democrat Kirsten Sinema to finalize a permanent giveaway to companies who want as much cheap labor as possible. Now, you're supposed to believe that Tillis, out of his deep patriotic concern for the nation, is working overtime to fix our current border woes. The Washington Post lays it on thick, saying, besides protecting two million dreamers, the cinema and Tillis draft would allocate money for border security, the hiring of more officers, and pay raises for agents. Okay, this is a total lie. Biden's DHS could be doing the border enforcement right now. But of course, they refuse to. And instead, they're waving in as many illegals into the country as possible. So negotiating with the White House on immigration now is like negotiating with a hostage taker. Title 42 is lifted on May 23rd. Um, what does success for your plan look like if it works as you intend? Success looks like the, looks like the orderly implementation of our plan, where we are applying our laws mm -hmm. uh, in accordance with their provisions in a way that respects individuals' rights to claim asylum. Of course they're acting in bad faith. How else do you describe the actions of officials who actively subvert Title 42, which you may remember, allowed for immediate border turnbacks because of the pandemic? Remember, Biden still says we're in a national emergency because of the pandemic. And how many times, by the way, have they all told us that the border is secure? That's the best joke ever. The reality is they want open borders, period, end of story. The amnesty will come to two million dreamers, but that will just be a magnet and the enforcement never will follow. It will simply mean more illegals lining up along the Rio Grande. Now, just last month, more than 73,000 gotaways, those are illegals who were able to get into the United States without being apprehended, crossed the border. That is the highest number ever recorded. Yeah, definitely do a deal with those guys. So for about 17 years now, the bipartisan establishment has been trying to convince you that we need to weaken our immigration rules even further. We cannot build a unified country by inciting people to anger or playing on anyone's fears or exploiting the issue of immigration for political gain. It is long past time to reform an immigration system that right now doesn't serve America as well as it should. The immigration reform is supported by everyone from labor unions to religious leaders to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Let's get it done once and for all. Now, your humble host has fought against this for most of the last 20 years. I warned the Bush administration what would happen if they didn't follow through on enforcement. And look who's been forced out of politics since. The Bushes, Boehner, Cantor, Liz Cheney, Pat Toomey, and the list goes on and on and on. And this new proposal is no better than any of the others that crashed and burned. In fact, it's the worst because it comes at a time of unprecedented border crashing. And whether we're in a recession now or will be cert you know, certainly soon, uh, that's terrible. And by the way, real wages are already falling in the United States. It's terrible timing. Now, they know you would vote against it if you could, yet they simply don't care. This cabal that hates the populace and hated the Tea Party knows where these immigration efforts will always end up if they're introduced in the regular legislative session. This is the reason for their hidden ball trick on amnesty right now. They know none of it's popular, that if they had to openly run on it, it probably would have cost them the Senate, the Democrats. So the Democrats are hoping that by the time 2024 rolls around, you'll have forgotten what they did to ram through all this runaway spending, immigration amnesty, eviscerating Made in America, fast-tracking pot use, and insulating the woke Pentagon from scrutiny. But we will not forget. And that is the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.